Regulating the press after the phone hacking scandal, a last-minute deal is reached by party leaders. But there's still debate over whether or not the system will be underpinned by law. We'll be asking what it will mean for Britain's newspapers also this lunchtime. Stock markets fall over plans for a one-off tax on people's bank savings in Cyprus as part of an EU bailout. A £2 billion investment in the UK's air and space industry to secure the future of more than 100,000 jobs. I'll be live in Baghdad 10 years after the American-led invasion that toppled Saddam Hussein. I'll be reporting on what's changed here in that decade. And Frank Thornton, known to millions as Captain Peacock in Are You Being Served, has died at the age of 92. Later on BBC London, our transport system described as world class, but a report finds that there's still more to be done. And charities warn how thousands of children in the capital are going hungry. Good afternoon and welcome to the BBC News at One. Leaders of the three main parties at Westminster say a last-minute deal has been reached on a plan to regulate the press in the wake of the phone hacking scandal. Detail Mark Lowen, BBC News, Nicosia. Let's speak to our economics editor, Stephanie Flanders. Is there any sense that governments in other Eurozone countries could be considering such a move? Well, I think the authorities would say very much no is the answer to that. And they'd certainly be hoping that savers in, in those other countries won't be worrying that it's going to happen in their country. And they've got some reasons for saying that Cyprus is a special case. It's a country which has much future bigger... Future growth. Bank. Hugh Pym, BBC News. Mairead Philpott has denied being involved in the deaths of her six children in a house fire in May last year. She told Nottingham Crown Court that her husband Mick was her guardian angel and insisted she was not guilty of six counts of manslaughter. Mick Philpott and their co-accused Paul Mosley also deny the charges. Well, Jeremy Cook is outside the court now. What more was said in court? With the latest there from Nottingham. Thank you very much. The time is almost quarter past one. Our top story this lunchtime. Regulating the press after the phone hacking scandal, a last minute deal is reached by party leaders, but there's still debate over whether or not it means the system will be underpinned by law. And still to come, we have moved. We'll be showing you around the BBC's newsroom in central London and showing you how technology has changed the way we bring you the news. Later on BBC London, the Metropolitan Police are investigating after Frank Lampard's 200th goal for Chelsea is marred by West Ham United fans throwing coins. And a blog's taking over from local newspapers. We look at one example in Kentish Town. This week marks the 10th anniversary of the start of the Iraq War. 179 British servicemen and women died during the conflict and it's thought that at least 116,000 civilians lost their lives in the years following the invasion. Our correspondent Ben Brown was with the troops when they entered Iraq in 2003. A decade later, he's back in Baghdad to see how life has changed for Iraqis since the fall of Saddam Hussein. Ben. With the enemy within. John Maguire, BBC News, Manchester. And there is lots more on the Iraq anniversary on the BBC News website at bbc.co.uk forward slash Iraq. Police are investigating the death of a man who was taken to hospital on Sunday from the home of the artist David Hockney. Dominic... Now, as you may have noticed, BBC News has moved into our new home at Broadcasting House in central London. After more than 40 years of news from Television Centre, we're making a little bit of television history today with the first BBC One News Bulletin to be broadcast from what's now the biggest and most high-tech newsroom in Europe. Nick Hyam reports on how the technology of television news has changed. In the Commons, Mr McLeod has said that the London busman's pay claim... BBC News, 1950s style. No auto cue, hand drawn maps and graphics, a black and white business that relied on laboriously processed news film. Then, around 1980, the switch from film to video, a revolution. And the fighting after it was, if anything, fiercer than it was before. Everything changed in the early 80s with the arrival of the handheld electronic camera. And the marvelous thing about that was you didn't know how to process it, you could edit it in the field. 
So people like myself, we had this wonderful sense of freedom. We could be thousands of miles from this sort of editorial hub that you see here, and we had to be trusted. There was a second revolution too. Originally, news films shot abroad had to be packed up and sent unprocessed by plane, arriving a day or more late. Satellites changed all that. But today, even satellite trucks like this could be replaced by the internet, broadband, and smartphones. We've got sandbags against the doors. This live interview last year was broadcast using just an iPhone. Now the studios too are at the cutting edge, largely automated and computer driven. For the first time we are broadcasting in true high definition and we've got shiny new studios that are bright, they are airy. For the first time in a long time we've gone back to having a real newsroom backdrop. That newsroom is Europe's largest. Impressive certainly. It reminds me of a sort of battery hen factory with electronic add-ons, but I'm sure it's going to produce some wonderful news. What matters is the people, really, but not the machinery. Well, here to explain a little bit more about those changes and our new state-of-the-art newsroom is Nick Hyam, right behind me there. Yes, indeed, here it is. It's absolutely enormous and it's the base for two and a half thousand journalists. It brings together the BBC's television news, radio news, online news and for the first time BBC World Service and 29 language services as well. And at its heart, this news desk. Home news that side, foreign news that side and fanned out around it, desks at which are working producers and editors are looking, working at all of the various different bits of output. So you've got television, news bulletins there, got BBC World Service there, BBC News Channel over there, the uh, uh, online news desk over there. And it's part of a £1 billion project, 6,000 staff working here in a new headquarters for the BBC alongside its iconic 1930s headquarters. Got all the latest technology as you'd expect and some old technology too. Some of us still read old-fashioned newspapers. They tidied that table up, I notice. Journalists, of course, very messy people and at the back of the room the galleries as they're called by the BBC the studio control rooms this is the control room for Studio E Barry the director outputting this very program and this studio and gallery will be home in the future to the news channel and to all the bulletins on BBC One Sophie Nick thank you very much time now for a look at the weather here's Louise Lear hi Louise Hi there, Sophie. Well, I tell you what, the great British weather trying desperately hard to upstage our new look BBC. I can't believe it. Good old um, wet winter is ripping. Look at this area of low pressure starts to move in from the west, and that, as it bumps into cold air, could mean snow. What a spoils. More thing. snow, Louise. Thank you very much. Now, a reminder of our main story this lunchtime. Regulating the press after the phone hacking scandal, a last-minute deal has been reached by party leaders, but there's still debate over whether or not the system will be underpinned by law. There'll be more on that story throughout the afternoon on the BBC News Channel, but now it's time to join the BBC's news teams where you are. Bye-bye.